Yan, kamusta mga kameta? Sabi ko, medyo catch up tayo habang may konting oras dito, mag-break muna tayo. Ito, updates tayo, no? Uh, so, mukhang may meetings na kaapon between President Biden and, and Chinese President or Paramount Leader Xi Jinping. And by all indication, mukhang the meeting went very, very well, no? Uh, so, medyo... Ang bali po ay hindi lang backdrop ng Eat, Pray, Love, no? yung memoir na naging Hollywood blockbuster. But Bali also serve as a backdrop for one of the most important and consequential uh, diplomatic meetings uh, in recent memory. So in many ways po, uh, mukhang ang US and China ngayon ay uh, committed at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, in terms of avoiding yung all-out new Cold War. No? Siyempre, ayon natin na mag-aaway yung dalawang higante na yan kasi kawawa naman tayo mga mas malilit ng bansa. Talagang matatapakan tayo ng dalawang higante na yan. So, gladly mga kameta, mukhang ito na. Si President Joseph Biden had a very cordial meeting, sincerely cordial meeting. Three hours conversation with uh, President Xi Jinping uh, in Bali, in Indonesia. Of course, mag, uh, may meta din tayo live from Bali soon, God willing, pag-usapan din natin yung mga nangyari in Indonesia because I think this year was also the year of President uh, Joko Widodo. I think President Joko Widodo, uh, he's really emerging as a global statesman after years of uh, kind of being uh, kind of a local-oriented president. Uh, kung maalala niyo, President Jokowi ng Indonesia ay medyo may pagka tatay digong style no no medyo may populist folksy side uh, medyo small town provincial mayor siya before uh, but eventually became the president of Indonesia but during his first term in office si Joko Widodo was much more focused on domestic uh, economic development and building bilateral relations with China and fellow ASEAN countries but nakikita talaga natin doon sa second term niya Joko Widodo has been really focused on uh, you know f playing a major global role as an, a mediator and lalong lalo nakita natin yan when Indonesia took over the G20 summit so G G20 po ay ito yung mga 20 largest economies and most uh, consequential countries on earth no so since the chairmanship of Jokowi of G20 earlier this year and, and actually last year pa lang nagkaroon kami ng mga meetings with, with our counterparts uh, and organizers of G20 in Indonesia over online unfortunately because of the pandemic and we had conversations about this and nakita natin very very uh, decidido ang mga Indonesians to do well because sila yung first ASEAN country that will uh, that was you know that that has been hosting and back then that will that will, will host the G20 summit so ito na by all indication very successful ang G20 summit natin in Bali uh, so President Jokowi of course earlier this year also tried to mediate yung competition or yung conflict actually between the West and Russia by visiting Ukraine, uh, meeting Zelensky, also visiting Putin in, in Kremlin. So that meeting went very, very uh, well, at least on the surface. Uh, Putin did not make it to G20 summit. Uh, people were expecting him to come. But I think because of yung sobrang sablay yung mga military operations nila sa Ukraine, they lost Kherson, the only provincial capital they have controlled in Ukraine over the past decade of invasion uh, since 2014, diba? Uh, actually, not since February this year. Mm, mukhang he was not confident enough to come. But Sergei Lavrov represented him in ASEAN, represented him in, in, in G20. Uh, and, you know, Sergei Lavrov had to really endure a lot because uh, Russia was not getting the kind of support and love that it was expecting. Even China emphasized the need for a peaceful solution of the disputes and warned against the use of nuclear weapons, something that Putin has warned uh, repeatedly has threatened Ukraine with as a way to reverse his conventional military defeats on the ground. And then, mga kameta, of course... Uh, Nakita din natin that there was a lot of emphasis on food security and ensuring there are no disruptions in terms of food supply. Again, major critical in Russia because Russia has been the one uh, who has been preventing Ukraine from their grain uh, exports passing through the Black Sea, no? especially from the Odessa area. So we saw a lot of improvement on that front. Uh, so Russia didn't get the kind of love it was expecting. Uh, and I think that's why it made sense for Putin to sk skip this altogether and let Lavrov, his foreign minister, to take the hit. Of course, yung foreign minister ng, ng Ukraine ay pinagtawanan din na marami dahil pa anti-West anti -West sila. Pero yung picture niya, naka-opo siya, naka-Apple Watch, naka-iPhone, naka-French designer shirt, 
ay mga hypocrisy ng mga ganito mga leaders na pantay anti west o sila mismo purong gumagamit ng American technology and uh, yung mga anak nila nag-aaral sa mga Ivy League schools ayan tayo but going back to this so so Putin skipped this but but nakita natin all major world leaders attended Macron from France the president uh, European uh, policy chief pero itong meeting talaga between Biden and Xi Jinping was very very important because You know, ang fear na maraming tao is that tuloy-tuloy itong kompetensya mm, between the, the two sides. And it is potentially going down and translating into a kind of a new Cold War. No? Katulad nung meron tayo between Soviet Union and the United States in the past, di ba? Uh, but it seems that both Biden and Xi Jinping felt confident enough uh, that they can put a floor para hindi pababa, spaghetti pababa yung kanilang... Uh, relationship and so that they avoid a kind of dangerous downward spiral no so there was a three hour meeting interestingly though mga kameta uh, if pansin nyo, of course the Chinese and Asians are very particular about these things usually Xi Jinping is on the left side of the picture as kind of the dominant actor uh, in any picture so he extends his right hand and then shakes hands like this interestingly though dito sa meeting niya with Biden it was Biden on the left hand so In a way, that's a major concession because that means that China is not insisting on being the dominant partner as far as relationship with the U.S. is concerned. And let's be honest, still the U.S. is the number one superpower. Uh, China is an emerging superpower in certain ways. is an emerging power, uh, superpower. But still, the U.S. has a whole network of allies that China doesn't have. Who, who does China have? Pakistan, North Korea, Russia. I mean, sabog naman yung ginagawa ng Russia ngayon. But the U.S. still has many, many key allies. Japan, Australia, and Europe. And then my mom major not so reliable, but still allies like the Philippines, etc., and so on and so forth. So, the U.S. is still the major power, financial power. U.S. dollars is still the global currency reserve. U.S. still controls the IMF, the World Bank, international financial institutions. U.S. still has the most powerful, uh, you know, uh, sources of soft power, including Hollywood, pop culture, so on and so forth. No, not to mention English. American English is still the global language, not Mandarin, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So. So I think there was at least a recognition by China that they shouldn't force being the dominant partner or be too aggressive in terms of this uh, engagements with the United States. Interestingly, kung maalala nyo, earlier this year, nung August, nung bumisita si Nancy Pelosi. Nancy B, na ibig lang. Nancy B, ito naman tayo, Tito Boy Soto eh. And then, nung earlier this year, si Nancy Pelosi, yung House Speaker ng US, no? nung, nung bumisita siya sa Taiwan. Of course, ang laking gulo nangyari yung, uh, ng China, ay nag-retaliate, gumawa siya ng mga massive war games para takutin ang Taiwan to even threaten yung flight ni Nancy Pelosi. Uh, so, there was a fear that bilateral cooperation between the US and China will completely collapse. No? Wag natin... Makali- wag natin kalimutan mga kameta na ang US and China are, you know, are, are crucial to global governance whether on the financial sector, whether in terms of military affairs, whether in terms of space technology, whether in terms of uh, high-tech uh, you know, innovation, but also in terms of climate change. No? Kung hindi mag-cooperate ng dalawang higante na yun, good luck sa humanity. Di ba? So there was a fear that because of that Nancy Pelosi visit and then of course later on US imposing all sorts of different sanctions on China that this relationship will collapse into a very, very, very dangerous situation. No? And in fact, there was also a fear that after Xi Jinping secured his historic third term in office, he will turn much more, uh, he'll turn much more ideological in terms of his foreign policy orientation. And that um, when it comes to Xi Jinping, he'll also be more, emphas- uh, more emphasizing domestic political stability and Chinese military capabilities rather than reaching out diplomatically to the West. No? So there were all sorts of those concerns. But it looks like though, Xi Jinping, now that he has consolidated power at home, feels more confident in reaching out to the United States. More than that, as far as Xi Jinping is concerned, he also wants to save his country's economy because the Chinese economy has been in big troubles because of the kapalpakan nila ng mga super strict na zero COVID uh, kind of approach. We shut down major cities over the months, including Shanghai and Beijing, and that has damaged their economy huge big time. So I think Xi Jinping has been practical and 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 you know has been sound enough, sane enough to realize that he cannot go on in a, in a Maoist direction. He cannot be the Mao with the money because for him to keep the money, his economy, his country's economy has to grow. So now he's relaxing the COVID-related uh, restrictions and lockdowns instead of seven days plus two, five days plus two, don't quarantine, so on and so forth. 
um and it looks like he still wants to make sure that china has enough openness to the world to attract high quality investments at the same time he also realizes picking a fight with the united states at this point in time is not something that china can afford whether over taiwan whether over west philippine sea whether over all other issues whereby there are some fundamental differences with the united states and president biden also his assessment is that china is not uh, you know intent on invading Taiwan anytime soon and that China wants to continue its economic progress take care of its own people improve economic conditions at home deal with domestic problems including you know, aging population on China so China may be large and powerful on the surface but internally it has a lot of problems it has an aging population its economy is slowing down uh, there's a lot of political discontent especially after the lockdowns very strict lockdowns over the years until today you know uh and you know president xi jinping now that is essentially the president for life the paramount leader of china, china he realizes he has long-term responsibility to making sure china holds it together you know? so i think biden also was smart enough to realize that so if you look at it i think that the, the meeting happened in the perfect timing because on one hand, Xi Jinping just secured a historic third time in office. He's not just a president. He's really a paramount leader. He controls the military, he controls the party, he controls the state. So he's not just a president. He's a supreme leader in many ways. No, uh, Not too different from how Kim Jong-un is, for instance, or North Korean leaders have been. He's a supreme leader. It's no longer a collective leadership. So I think he's strong enough to make concession internationally or, or to focus on global leadership. In the case of Biden, again, he defied all odds. He's now considered as the most successful democratic president since J.F. Kennedy. <laughs> uh, at least if you look at his party's performance in the midterm elections, they held on to Senate relatively comfortably and they're narrowly losing the, the House of Representatives to Republicans. Everyone was expecting a shellacking, as Obama put it. Everyone was expecting that Biden would lose 60, 70, 80 seats no? uh, in the House and, and lose the Senate. None of that happened. So I think Biden is also very, very confident after the very strong performance of his party. So imagine good mood in both leaders and both leaders feel confident that they can come together and look at the big picture. And the big picture is this. Yes, we have differences over North Korea, especially over Taiwan on South China Sea. We have differences over value systems, political systems. That's true. But we cannot afford a conflict, all out conflict, a full fledged new Cold War right now. And there are, you know, the winter is coming, you know, there's climate change there. There's a threat of nuclear war in, in Europe. Uh, I mean, the conflict between Russia and, 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 and Ukraine, whereby the NATO is really involved there and pushing back against Russian in invasion and new imperial ambitions. Uh, and North Korea, we don't know where that's going to go. That's also a very scary direction. So I think both sides realize that there's just so much for them to focus on in terms of shared interests that... Uh, you know they can not park but at least find ways to responsibly manage their competition no this is this is very important now earlier china was threatening to suspend even climate change related cooperation with the united states as a retaliation for america's uh uh you know for america's policies on taiwan its military support for taiwan for nancy pelosi's visit to taiwan uh and so on and so forth but now it looks like the Chinese are saying, fine, we can continue these cooperative regimes, this U.S.-China dialogue and cooperative regimes, and accordingly uh, accordingly move in the right direction. No? So, I don't know. I mean, that's very interesting that Bali, which is a, you know, it was the backdrop for, for Eat, Pray, Love, and, and, you know, the Hollywood uh, blockbuster based on the memoir, is now also a kind of a tropical paradise that hosted this very, very important meeting. And para sa akin, kung hindi nagkaroon ng ganitong meeting, There'll be really a lot of worries about the direction of the two powers, no? San sila pupunta. So, so ito talaga, ito very, very important, itong nangyaring meeting na yan. Uh, so, ehabol ko, by the way, itong writing. So, I'm still writing on this issue. I'll still file a story on this issue. So, kaya sabi ko bago maging gabi. Kasi kailangan natin ng natural lighting dito. Ayan yung mga cousin natin dyan, si Dr. Denise. Ayan, nagpapareveal. Ayan na, may mga pictures tayo na post. Eh. Reveal kayo ng reveal. <laughs> ayan tayo, ayan, no? Ayan, mga kameta, mga influencers. Mga ka-influencers, ayan. <laughs> ayan, okay, okay. Balik na tayo sa trabaho. Okay, sabi ko nga makikipag-catch up lang tayo sa mga kameta. Baka kalain nyo, nakalimutan nyo. Ka, uh, nakam, nakalimutan ko na kayo kasi 
busy tayo, busy tayo mag-influencer, busy tayo mag-pitch walk, mga ganyan. Okay, okay. No, 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 seriously guys. So don't worry, I'm gonna post my article on this soon. Uh, I'm, I'm still, you know, wrapping things up. Ang daming kailangan i-analyze. Na-post ko na yung analysis ko of ASEAN Summit, recent ASEAN Summit, and Biden's and U.S. sparring inside the ASEAN, which I think was good enough to pave the way for this very, very helpful meeting between itong dalawang higante na yan. So, really interesting, you know? I mean, Xi Jinping was not on the left side. It was very cordial. Three hours meeting. Each side released their statements. I checked the Chinese Foreign Minister version. I checked the uh, U.S. Uh, White House version. Both sides, more or less similar statements came out. So, that means... They are, you know, they have the similar wavelength you know, on issues. Again, no, I have no illusions whatsoever. This relationship can go wrong any moment because they're stuck in a structural competition. Parang unavoidable na yan. The U.S. is a status quo power that doesn't want to give up its status. And China is a rising power that doesn't want to be second, a second doesn't want to be second to none. I, I mean, wants to be second to none. Doesn't want to be second to anyone, right? So it, it's it, there, definitely there are structural tensions there. The Taiwan issue will not go away anytime soon. It's going to get worse. The South China Sea issue is not going to get, get uh, go away anytime soon. It's going to get worse. In fact, I need to tie para focus on the South China issue, South China Sea issue. Um, but I think with responsible statesmanship, it can be handled. It can be managed in the best way possible, uh, so that hopefully we reach a point whereby other countries can become big enough to mediate this relationship in a better way. And, you know, in 20, 30, 20, 30 years down the road, India will be the third largest power and not too far from U.S. and China. Indonesia will be among the top five biggest powers in the world by the middle of the century. Europe is moving towards more consolidation and put together, they're also a major force in the world. And who knows, with Vietnam, Philippines, Japan, South Korea, especially Brazil. I mean, there's so many other emerging powers. And kudos also to President Jokowi of Indonesia for trying to act as a mediator and relatively successful as far as at least hosting this very important detente meeting uh, between uh, Biden and Xi is concerned. So, maraming salamat sa, sa Indonesia, sa ating mga kapatid dyan. And hopefully, we'll have more metas from Indonesia. We're going to have talks with our counterparts there. I'm going to give talks in universities there uh, and with university students in, in Indonesia, Jakarta soon. Uh, God willing, inshallah. So, there's so much to discuss. No? So, yun lang. As an ASEANist, as a Southeast Asianist, I'm proud that we, that in one way or another, we have played a critical role in bringing these two major powers together. And we're going to watch carefully how the two powers will operationalize uh, their detente. No? This kind of... Uh, hindi naman beshi, pero yung parang tipong, Siya pare, huwag muna tayo magsuntukan, mag-usap na lang tayo. Kasi magsuntukan tayo, talo tayo pareho. Di ba? Parang may pagkaganan, eh, di ba? But as I said, of course, things can still still dramatically change. God forbid an accident happened in the South China Sea or Taiwan. Uh, if U.S. politics is crazier domestically, then Biden will have to be more flexing muscle internationally to do a rallying around the flag at home. Yes, I have no illusions about any of those things. Absolutely none. But what I'm saying is that every single move in the right direction counts. We have to welcome it and we have to encourage it. We have to encourage the better angels of the nature of both U.S. and China. Yung lang sinasabi natin mga kameta, di ba? Uh, because otherwise, downward spiral na yan and we might find ourselves in a very, very dangerous situation down the road whereby all-out conflict will become almost inevitable. I mean, if you look at it, there have been all sorts of war games recently, right and left, about what will U.S. do if a war happens in Taiwan. And by the way, mga kameta, sabi ko, may utang ako sa inyo, we still have to do a proper meta on the on the Taiwan issues because my direct implication ito sa Pilipinas because God forbid may war hap, any war happens there damay damay niyan kasama tayo dyan napakalapit yung Fuga Island yung yung Batanes natin dyan sa Taiwan at dahil US Treaty Ally tayo will be dragged into that conflict whether we want it or not in one way or another alright so so we will so we have to watch out very carefully US-China competition because my direct implication yan sa atin sa Pilipinas. On Taiwan, which is next to us, in terms of our trade and strategic relationship with the two countries on the South China Sea, etc. Now, I'm not saying that both are the same. I'm not saying that US is good and China is good or both are bad. No, no. Definitely there is an asymmetry. One is an ally, one is a rival in the South China Sea, but also an important trading partner. So, major complicated in relationship natin in that sense. But... I broadly welcome the effort of our current president and others to have 
the best possible optimal balancing strategy towards the two powers. Yun lang sinasabi natin dyan. Without forgetting that one is a treaty ally and another is threatening us in the, threatening us in the West Philippine Sea and among other ways. Alright? So marami sa lahat mga kameta, magparasalamat tayo dito sa mga talaga mga supporters natin kay Katrina Paladin Frias. Salamat. Kay Ma'am Jocelyn Lomberi as always, super supportive. Kay Ma'am Eden Olonan. Thank you so much Ma'am also for your support. Kay Senan Makalalat, kay Sir Michael Uy as always watching us and supporting us. Kay Noemi Tablate, salamat din. Kay Riz Annie, kay Zoe Goko, thank you. Thank you so much again ha, sa lahat ng mga nagbigay ng support. Let's catch up soon. Sorry, habol ko po tong article ko dito sa, uh, sa about the G20 summit. Ang dami pa nangyari including on Russia. Balikan natin yung issue na yan once na wrap up yung G20 summit. I'll go through them. Hindi ko dala yung isang laptop ko kasi yun yung ginagamit natin pang OBS natin. So medyo ganyan muna tayo, mga chill lang tayo na back and forth. But uh, God willing, next time soon we can have a proper sit down and discussion over what's happening as for G20 and all is concerned. So yan, para medyo iba naman. Alam ko, ngayon ang tinitignan, ko, yung, tinitignan nyo yung, yung back and forth between Bantag ba yan, Bantag and Romulia. I know, I know, I know. Gusto nyo mga bardagulan topics. Don't worry, babalikan natin mga bardagulan topics na yan soon. But in the meantime, medyo zoom out naman tayo mga kameta. Marami mga vloggers at mga trash you patapon dyan to discuss mga local issues na ganyan. Or mga bardagulan. I'm here to help educate us guys. Medyo help you know, in a way to share my views about what's happening globally. At hindi naman tayo basta-basta lang, diba? <laughs> Ayan na naman tayo. Ayan na naman tayo. Di talagang nakalusot talaga eh. <laughs> Ayan na naman tayo mga kameta. Mga kameta, part of gula. Ayan. Parang, parang ayaw ko na magtrabaho. Magano muna tayo. Magchill muna tayo. Alright. Okay. Mga kameta guys. Talk to you soon. Puyakasha.